Hello everyone, this is Dave Lipscomb, Director of Strategic Communications for PBI. Welcome back to Corporate Pro Bono's CLO and Pro Bono podcast series. This week's episode features Mary Ann Short, Executive Vice President and Chief Legal Officer at United Health Group. We talked to Mary Ann about United Health Group's pro bono efforts, including its Review Arama partnership project with Connecticut Veterans Legal Center, which mobilizes hundreds of department volunteers to review records for veterans' benefits cases. She also shared insight into the role providing pro bono legal services has played in her own career, developing skills that she would not have otherwise had, giving her courtroom experience, allowing her to pursue her interests in social justice, and providing her an opportunity to build a deep relationship with United Health Group, indirectly leading to her current position. We hope you enjoy the interview. Hi, Mary Ann. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Let's jump right in. How about you tell me a little bit about yourself, your legal department, and its pro bono program? Sure. Thanks, David. Um, Mary Ann Short. I'm the Executive Vice President and Chief Legal Officer at United Health Group. Uh, United Health Group's pro bono program provides a framework that encourages our attorneys and legal staff to perform legal services for the disadvantaged in their communities. We offer pro bono services uh, to a wide variety of deserving organizations and individuals as well. And our attorneys and paralegals uh, work in teams that spark everything from an interest in youth in legal profession to working in the nonprofit organizations to help them comply with legal and regulatory requirements. And then we have a number of other uh, programs that we offer or opportunities for our employees to represent children in foster care placements, to advise small business owners, to draft wills and health directives for seniors and veterans, and to help people resolve issues that um, involve housing or assisting clients with citizen applications. So it really runs the gamut. There are lots of opportunities, and we try to meet the interests of our own employees and the needs of the communities. Tell us why pro bono is so important um, to leaders of legal departments, to the business community, uh, to the the legal department and legal staff themselves, uh, to the community as well. Well, I think it's important for the individual lawyers and paralegals because it gives us some further legal experience, and obviously it gives you clients of your own other than just your business colleagues. And, you know, oftentimes you can develop skill sets that you may not um, hear in a big organization like United or back when I was at a law firm in a law firm because you handle matters maybe in court like housing and small claims that you wouldn't otherwise do. Why is it important to the community? Well, because it's the opportunity to give back and help um, so many nonprofit organizations that are challenged and need help, and obviously the communities as well. So it really just builds on what is already an interest of employees, gives them an outlet for it, and it contributes to the communities in which our companies are located. Are there any other additional benefits from pro bono work? You mentioned um, that oftentimes your lawyers get to do or practice skills that they wouldn't ordinarily do in their, in their work. Um, are there any other benefits like that? Well, it obviously um, lets people be part of something bigger than themselves or bigger than our company. So it lets all of us, I think many of us went to law school or became involved in legal um, work in some fashion because we wanted to give back. And so it's obviously an opportunity for us with our colleagues to give back. And I think it's the job of our leaders here and our employers not just to permit pro bono service, but really to encourage it and encourage giving back. And I think volunteering um, is something that everyone is interested in, and it's good for us, it's good for the companies, it's good for our neighborhoods really around the world. Your department is a signatory to the Corporate Pro Bono Challenge Initiative. Why is that important? You know, obviously the CPBO Challenge um, you know, asks us to achieve at least 50% participation in pro bono. And that's admirable in itself, but it also very much aligns with our company mission here of helping people live healthier lives and inspiring kind of solidarity among 
corporations nationwide to support pro bono. So I think it helps the legal profession. It helps, um, you know, focus our attention, not just on the words, but in actually getting it done, measuring that we're doing it. So I think the challenge was, uh, was a challenge to everyone, and I think it really has proved to be a furtherance, as I said, of many of our company missions. And when I was in the private practice of law, you know, a, a good outlet for us to get to know each other better and, again, feel good about contributing to all the, you know, communities that we serve in. As a CLO, what role do you play in encouraging pro bono within your department and the legal community? Obviously, the challenge is a starting point, um, but what other roles do you play? So within the department and the legal community, I, I try to lead by example. I've been involved in personally and volunteering um, since I started practicing law, you know, as a young associate at a law firm. So I try to lead by example. I'm involved in many of the programs, but I also think it's important to have a, a committee. So we have a pro bono committee that's very active in coordinating different programs and really listening to our folks to find out what new areas they might be interested in and what new opportunities we could create by partnering with some of our good um you know, clients or companies and law firms. Uh, again, I teamed up with this company that I'm at now, United. When I was at Dorsey & Whitney, we partnered with them. We did legal work for them and partnered with them on a wills clinic. And I think that's an example of some of the things that we're trying to do here. So we don't usually go it alone. We look for an opportunity with another organization in the community. So that gives us some cross-fertilization. It gives us more volunteers, and usually it gives us a deeper bench for uh, doing the work. For example, we um, do veteran work here at the company. That's one of our interests and one of our focuses. And so one of our pro bono activities uh, that's highly successful and been a two-year program already is working with the Connecticut Veterans Legal Center. So we launched that some time ago. It involves, again, our lawyers, our paralegals, um, the legal center in Connecticut, and what we try to do is we try to review the military personnel records and to help um, veterans, uh, you know, get needs that they, you know, pursue some of their benefits that they've had trouble um, doing. So it's a huge, it started off as a really successful program, again, because we're in that space ourselves. So a lot of our employees are interested in, in doing this and in giving back in this way. And this year, we've launched the second year program of it, started Memorial Day, it'll finish in Veterans Day, and we have 183 individual volunteers from across our entire uh, legal and compliance and regulatory group, um, so far surpassing much of what we thought we would get, and um, they've been able to really help veterans get the benefits they need and deserve. Other than you know meeting the challenge initiative goals, what goals have you set for the department uh, for the pro bono program? Well, I mean, we have the obviously the challenge goal, but I, you know, I guess I don't set uh, numbers. Um, but I tr what I try to do is challenge us on the committee and challenge the leaders to think of programs that would be of interest to our employees, and then the rest just follows it. I mean, we obviously provide time for people to do this, and we try to provide another support not just our own leadership, but a leadership from a partner. So it it seems to be, uh, again, it isn't beyond the 50% ch you know, number. I, ha I don't have another number besides that, but I'm really amazed at how many people are so generous with their time and talent and give and really enjoy it. We get to know each other a lot better doing it, too, as well as contributing to the communities. Uh, I think you touched on this a little bit earlier, and you talked about leading by example, but how did you initially become involved with Pro Bono, and what was your experience like uh, being brought into it? Well, it's a long time ago. It's hard to remember, but <laughs> um, when I first started as a young associate in a big law firm in Minneapolis, I went to what was called then legal advice clinics um, every, I think, Thursday or every second Thursday of a month. And I really signed up for that program. Again, it was after work, so kind of five to seven, think of it that way. So you were taking two or three clients during that time period. But again, I signed up for it because I thought I'm, you know, an associate in a big law firm and I'm doing a lot of research memos for others and I'm not really getting into court. 
and if I did this, at least I was told, and it turned out to be correct, that I would have, again, clients of my own, and I would be handling matters in court. So I was in housing court and small claims court and divorce court and, you know, name changes and things like that. So they were small, um, discreet matters, but for real people who needed some legal skills. And, I, you know, it was a great opportunity for me to be a counselor, as I said, to a real client, as opposed to just advising my partners on different research projects I'd looked at. So I, I felt it really kind of took me back to maybe the spirit in which I went to law school to sort of pursue some social justice, you know, passion and made me feel like I was giving back to the community. And plus I was meeting new people um, and doing good for them, hopefully, and also learning some new experiences and actually getting in court. So it kind of fulfilled a lot of maybe professional goals, but it maybe rekindled probably the social justice thing that brought me to law school in the first place. Right. It sounds like it's had a continuing role, um, which is great. And like you said, it's given you skills and opportunities that perhaps you wouldn't have had otherwise. Oh, no question. And, you know, again, when I was at a firm as opposed to inside a company, I was matching our group with this company. And I think I met uh, many of the leaders here that went on to become the future leaders of the company and probably, I don't want to say it directly led to my position here, but it certainly led to the deep relationship that led to the meeting, my job here. You mentioned how um, happy you are with some of the work that you all have done with veterans. Um, are there any other examples of pro bono efforts of which you are particularly proud? Yeah, let me give you just a couple, and, you know, they really run the gamut, and obviously it's personal to these are ones that I've worked in, and there are many others that others in the company have done so well with. But when I was back at the law firm, you know, a number of years ago now, I, we started this wills clinic, we call it, but it's drafting wills and health directives, and we matched ourselves up with my company now, United Health Group, and peered, you know, with... Um, you know, we'd go to different um, senior elderly homes and with other lawyers and match up, and we'd do everything from a power of attorney to a health directive and drafting a will. And I literally, until a couple of years ago, I would get a Christmas card every year from someone I had done the will for like 15 years ago. So it's, you know, it's the personal touch. Um, it's not necessarily the difficulty of the task that you're doing, but it's really seeing that it makes a huge difference for someone. And so I've been proud of that, that I led it on that side, and then I'm working in it here. And then one that's new to me anyway this year that I just became a little bit involved with is an organization here in Minnesota that's called Just the Beginning. It's a summer legal institute for um, um, underprivileged students that are sort of late in high school or maybe getting ready to think about the next level beyond high school. And so it's set up almost like a little moot court, if you will, or trying to coach them during the course of a week to explain the court system and prepare kind of an appellate argument on a topic that might be relevant to them. And it's run by this foundation, this Just the Beginning Foundation. But our lawyers pair up with them as well and participate in a lesser way than they do. But our attorneys and paralegals uh, do some work with them. And I was involved just this week listening to them and telling them the difference between an appellate court and a trial court, but also listening to their arguments in a school board, you know, versus a student, free speech, you know, personal rights and versus bullying in, in a way that was interesting to me because I was an appellate judge for 12 years on the Court of Appeals so in Minnesota. So that was interesting. So there are a lot of different opportunities, and I think they run the gamut from encouraging the youth to go further in school and think about the legal profession um, as a profession in some fashion, to working with the elderly on wills and other things, to, uh, as I said, the veterans program. So those are just a kind of a sampling. You know, we've, we've talked to lots of folks in the Midwest and about the culture of pro bono there, and uh, there's been a lot of really interesting um, interesting um, levels of engagement, creativity, collaboration um, that I think other parts of the country sometimes look to when it's uh, when they're looking for ways to expand the way they do pro bono, the, uh, the impact and things like that. Um, you know with that in mind, sort of what direction would you like to see pro bono move going forward? 
Well, it's a good question, and we do talk about it inside. And I think it probably, I mean, I would say, you know, more opportunities for more of our employees and helping them be able to satisfy their, you know, desire to live mission and give back. So, but I think, I mean, the direction, you know, I kind of, it's the interests of those that are participating. So our pro bono committee sits down with the folks and, and also with some of our lawyers and paralegals, you know, in an abstract way and says, well, what would you, if you could design something, what would you work on? And we really gather, you know, like a brainstorming session, ideas from a whole slew of people. And, and that's how we got onto this veterans one. That's one of the ways. But and then we also reach out to our partners that we, you know, outside of the company that we partner with and get and try to figure out their needs. So we obviously support in financial ways and other ways. Many of us are on boards of legal advice groups and legal aid groups, and we try to listen to what their need or the need of the community might be. And so we kind of pick different things. So we don't just stay static in a couple of groups that are working. We try to keep it ever fresh, if you will, to attract more and more of our folks to work. Is there anything else uh, that I haven't touched on that perhaps um, you're very eager to tell us about, um, but we just don't know to ask about? You know, pro bono is a, a opportunity for all of us to give back to the communities we serve, but it certainly makes our personal life richer. It just doesn't make the communities better. It makes us richer. It's a great opportunity for us to even get to know our business colleagues in a different way and, you know, see pieces of us that we might not have seen before. So I'm, you know, I don't think it's restricted to a certain age or a certain um, uh, stage of your career. Uh, it's something that's given me great joy from the very early stages of my career till now in my senior years. So. Thanks again for joining us on the podcast. We really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Thank you. Thank you for listening to our interview with Marianne Short, Executive Vice President and Chief Legal Officer at United Health Group. To learn more about United Health Group's Reviewerama, check out the PBI's blog post submitted by Connecticut Veterans Legal Center. Visit our website, Pro Bono inst.org to access the blog. We hope that you enjoyed the program and that you will join us again for future episodes of the CLO and Pro Bono podcast series. To stay up to date on our podcast, subscribe on iTunes or visit cpbo.org slash podcast.